Navigating the public health and global health space as students and early career professionals can be difficult. Understanding that so many people face similar challenges, we've identified a need to do things differently. In this episode, we'll be talking about some of the key lessons we've learned from actively engaging with hundreds of aspiring public health professionals through our free service, Office Hours. This is the Public Health Insight Podcast. Before we move on, it is important to note that the views expressed in this podcast are our own and do not represent any of the organizations we work for or are affiliated with. My name is LaShawn, and I'll be your host for this episode alongside my fellow co-host, Gordon. What's going on? Talking about office hours? Yes, sir. Let's get the show on the road. All right. So I remember when I was transitioning from studying biology and biochemistry and then transitioning into public health. I had absolutely no support networks or mentors that was able to guide me in this field. And I didn't have a sense of what resources were out there, who to talk to, and what kind of trajectory I could help forge towards my path into public health and global health. So at Public Health Insight, we've kind of realized that this is a very, very important area of focus. Why do you think that it's important to engage with students and early career professionals, Gordon? I would put it in simple terms because of the benefits we've received from engaging with people who have shared very valuable things with us. So in a nutshell, we just want to do the same to people and make it more accessible. A lot of people have fears about networking with others. People have varying degrees of comfort with making that first step. So we as a platform try to call people in uh, and give them a safe space to have those conversations to navigate that complex public health career journey. And did you have any sort of struggles when you were applying to you know, public health or starting off in public health to find some of these resources, whether it's a mentor, a friend, or someone who can kind of, you know, just have a very frank discussion and honest discussion about public health and the field itself? You know, to be honest with you, I didn't really search, but I think that's the problem. Like you don't, you didn't even know that was a possibility necessarily to actually have conversations with people and how willing those people would be to have those conversations. Given that I was late to the LinkedIn party, I'm a late bloomer on LinkedIn. So I didn't even know what platforms existed. I know when I was applying to med schools, you had the Reddit forums and you had Uh, student doctor portal forums or sort of a bit of a community with people having questions and answers. I wasn't aware of anything similar for public health in the public health space. So I think given that we have learned a lot through those interactions, we actively look for ways to disseminate that knowledge and call people in to know that they can have their questions answered while they're making some tough decisions. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, I think for me, I was just pretty lost and i really yeah, like lost yeah did you find yourself no yet? i still haven't fi- found myself yet it's a day-to-day thing but mm. anyways i just think for me i felt lost and for me it was very important to you know hear some sort of story from a real person like you could read all these program descriptions and competencies but what does it actually mean how do you what's the practicality of it I want to hear from people's experiences, their stories, their journeys, and I could better relate to those types of things. And I think that's why for me, engaging with, you know, mentors or people who have been in the field for a while has been such a valuable thing in my career. And I have so many different mentors in the field now, and I'm so grateful for them because they, there's people who have been there, done that. And, you know, they've accomplished some great things. And it's very inspiring to have some sort of role model. And, Mm -hmm. you know, taking that a step further and having Public Health Insight as this wide-reaching platform, we've heard from you all. And we have seen this as such an important facet of your public health journey. You know, someone to interact with, someone to, you know, talk about some of your struggles coming into the field, someone to ask questions to, Someone to just talk to about public health, because I think everyone just needs that buddy at some point. So Mm -hmm. that that is kind of one of the reasons we think it's really important to have these discussions of public health, because myself, looking back years now, would have 
love to have an opportunity to easily and accessibly connect with others. You know, if we take things back a bit, the reason we started the podcast, I would say the primary reason was we enjoyed having public health related conversations and some of them were very captivating enough given that we, we we hung out in relatively large groups a lot of people with different lived experiences and backgrounds with different perspectives so we have a very rich diverse conversations about different public health topics so we got these in the podcast as we started to do more of those we heard from people all over the world about hey you got me excited about public health. Uh, I didn't know what was out there. And we actually had people reaching out to us to pick our brains on certain things. So as we started to get these more and more, we realized, hey, there's really a, a need for people getting access to folks who are maybe not so far removed from them. Because networking, sometimes if, you know, if you're talking to a CEO, or you're talking to a manager, they maybe did their MPH five, six, ten years ago, and the public health landscape might have changed drastically where their learnings wouldn't be as applicable to the current environment. And we'll get into this a bit later, but that's what we also learn from the community is that we learn when we're abreast about the different changes that are currently happening in public health, even though we are not so far remo removed from it. So this also keeps us grounded into the happenings in the public health world so that we can even provide better guidance and advice for those who reach out to us in the future. Yeah, and I think about it as this huge learning network that we're also creating, right? And you mentioned mm. we started off with the podcast. We've had people reach out to us. We've set up hundreds and hundreds of meetings with individuals from across the world. And we've been learning a lot of different things and a lot of the different challenges and struggles people have been you know, having. And so... One of these services that we've actually created, and we talked about it in a previous episode as well, is public health office hours. And how does this relate to what we're talking about in engaging students and young professionals, Gordon? Right. So throughout those the outreach efforts of our community, uh, you know, we get emails. Hey, I'm a fourth year psychology student. I don't know how I can leverage my skills in public health. And we would basically set up these informal meetings where we would take their concerns or their questions and then try to guide them along a path to make a decision that works best for their aspirations. So the more we start getting these, the more we realize that there was an actual need for it. So we, in 2022, we implemented our formal office hours where we have a dedicated 30-minute appointments for anyone who has career questions questions about MPH, other related degrees in public health, and job search or job seeking advice. So Office Hours allows us to have conversations with on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help facilitate those discussions and guide people along a journey that they're passionate about. I like that. And taking that a step further, you already mentioned that we have talked to so many different people, students and young professionals, and we've been learning so much from them about the ongoing evolving landscape of public health. What other things have we learned? So what are some of those lessons we've learned from these meetings? What are some of these challenges that are often coming from students and young professionals engaging us? And why do you think that we, there's this gap? Why isn't this hasn't been done by other organizations in a more accessible way? or public mm -hmm. health schools in a more accessible way? The, I would say for me, the most interesting thing that I learned from doing office hours and just engaging with students and early career professionals in general would be you learn about some of those gaps that exist in MPH programs or graduate degrees in terms of preparing you to enter the workforce. That's one thing that stood out. So. We went to Western MPH. Uh, we learned quite a lot about public health, but there's also quite a bit that we didn't learn. But one thing we started to realize through having these conversations is that perhaps there will never be an MPH program 
that sufficiently prepares you 100% to hit the ground running when you start your career. So what does that mean? That means you have to be committed to lifelong learning to enhance those skills and strengths that you already have and maybe to polish up those weaknesses that you do have. And that's something you have to do in your own time, something you have to do maybe outside the classroom and ultimately take what you learn into the jobs that you're looking for and the job that you currently occupy. So we started to hear those concerns around what does professional development look like? What does continuing education look like? And LaShawn and I have are very aware around the, the landscape that exists to enhance learning outside of the classroom with things such as certifications. And I would say many of the people, almost 100% of the people we talk to are completely unaware of those opportunities outside of pursuing, oh, should I do another master's? Should I do a PhD? Should I do a PR, DRPH? Hold on, wait a minute. Why do you want to do those, first of all? And two, did you know that there are other very reputable things that you could do that don't take nearly as long and cost nearly as much money that you can use to stand out in the job market? So we're realizing there that there was a huge gap that people would complete their degrees, maybe having difficulties finding a job and didn't know where else to go to enhance their application to make them a stronger candidate. So that's the one big thing that I learned from doing this. So digging a bit deeper there, you were kind of mentioning how there can never be this perfect MPH program that encompasses, you know, all these different skills and all can it adequately address all these gaps. What, in your opinion, what are some of these gaps, generally speaking, that MPH programs could utilize to create a better fleet or workforce of public health professionals? <laughs> you're, you're trying to get me in trouble here, LaShawn? I'm just asking the questions that people want. Trying to get me in trouble? Okay. So I, I'll, I'll throw it back over to you in a sec, but let's just backtrack for a bit. So the practicum placement of a Master of Public Health program is supposed to be designed to give you real-world experience so that you can go out and be effective. The problem with the practicum placement is, one, who's your practicum supervisor and what organization you're doing your practicum at. Not every experience is good experience in terms of advancing your education and skills. However, even bad experiences can teach you a lot. So there's value in any experience. But now, so I'll, I'll answer your question now. What we find is we talk a lot about, in public health programs, the foundational competencies in public health. Uh, epidemiology, biostats, health economics, health equity, inclusion, that sort of stuff. But we don't talk a lot about the how to get things done with limited resources. We don't talk about how to effectively handle conflicts in a workforce. We don't have frameworks to handle those situations. Some programs have team-based learning and you're able to navigate it through scenario-based learning but you're often not given a framework for how to actually approach those situations. So those are the gaps that I was referring to that you can fill outside of the classroom. And that's perhaps something MPH programs across the world can look to build in, into their curriculum. Things like project management, things like we talk about health promotion, but there's no real talk around where does the social media, digital marketing part fits into public health and health promotion. We don't really talk about stuff like that. So those are some of the key things that I was talking about where MPH programs might want to look to modernizing their curriculum, in particular after the COVID-19 pandemic. What about you? What do you think about those gaps? I love that. You need to, you need to get in trouble too. No, I, I don't think it's about getting in trouble. I think it's just, mm. these are all experiences that we've had talking to students and young professionals. They're saying the same things. Oftentimes, they might come out of a program saying, yeah, I learned about this concept. I learned about that framework. But how do I, do I actually know it? Like, how do I practically implement some of these things and these ideas in an effective way within an organization, considering the different constraints in that organization, considering the scope of the different projects that organizer works in, considering the monetary side of things, considering the different risks of doing some things, considering the different communication channels of implementing something, considering the different stakeholders of doing something. Like those are different practical constraints that you will encounter, right? And oftentimes we hear that 
they don't really teach that in MPH programs. Some might touch on it, but having that firm confidence and framework and, you know, competence around implementing and actually doing and practicing public health, hmm. pe people would like more of that, it seems, from our discussions. Right, right. So it's not hmm. about getting in trouble or anything like that. It's just about what the people think, right? These are hmm. valid you know, critiques and feedback that we're getting from the community from multiple different MPH programs across the mm. world. And I think that's important to highlight too, because if you're an up and coming student in public health, these are questions to ask these programs, right? You want to ask them if you're going to get specific skills and you want to press on specific questions that you want answered to ensure that what you're going into is exactly what you want out of it. So mm -hmm. that's what I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, and and you're right. It's more like it's not even us per se. It's the needs that have been identified by students who have or recent graduates. They're reflecting and saying, "Hey, I wish I would have learned more about mm -hmm. X, Y, Z," exactly. and I don't feel competent in executing X, Y, Z. And I think it comes down a lot of times to those practical skills. So some programs, Western University in particular has case-based learning and case-based learning has a potential to teach you a lot but there's some inherent shortcomings in that so you have a case do you have a problem you identify a solution and in the context of the solution we don't often talk about those real world constraints that can interfere with a solution being implemented so in those cases you talk about is the problem identified Okay, and is the solution fundamentally sound from a public health perspective? But we don't talk about the practicality of those solutions. And what we've learned ourselves is that if you think everything is possible when you're working and that you have all the funds to do it, you have all the people to do it, you have buy-in from your own organization to do it, you're up for a rude awakening. Wait, 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 wait. Often, I thought anything was possible, according to Kevin Garnett. Well, listen, the reality is you'll never have enough money. You'll never have enough people. You'll never have enough time to do projects and public health interventions in the way that they deserve to be done. Mm. So does that mean it has to be a zero-sum game where it's just we want all or nothing? No. I think we have to work within the margins as public health professionals how to do the best job with what we have, right? The reality is you can scream from the mountaintops for funding and this and that, but if you have $100 a month to do something, you have to figure out a way how to get the best out of that. And I don't think we learned that in MPH programs. And that's more where we talk about the project management side of things and how you know, the gap in our learning can be filled with other certifications like project management, such and such. So that's one of the things that I learned, you know, how do you lead effective meetings? So you have a certain group or coalition or community of practice, and then you've attended a meeting a month for a whole year, and then you realize the 12th meeting sounds exactly like the first meeting you had for that year. You're not making any progress. How do you measure projects? How do you set SMART goals? How do you delegate tasks? Do you, how, setting deadlines, holding people accountable? That's the nitty gritty of working in a profession, period, not even public health. So I would just say we should learn a little bit more about those transferable working skills rather than the public health foundations. And that would enhance our ability to practice public health. And I do think there is room for that advocacy component. You know, you go into an organization or you see organizations maybe not doing things the right way and you know, you want right. to advocate for change. And I think we have a pretty good grasp of that in public health. Mm -hmm. Now, bringing in these different skills to understand at what levels can you target to help realize that specific change you want in a practical sense, right? Are you talking to the right people? Maybe, maybe not. So making sure you have that focus lens and you have that lens of how can I actually get this done in a very practical, realistic and calculated way. Absolutely. So we're saying all this, we're talking about our experiences, doing office hours with hundreds of students across the world. Gordon and I really love this. We make time for it. You can schedule some time on our website 
at www.thepublichealthinsight.com. And you could set up a specific time slot to meet with myself and Gordon. And you can, on that form that you're requesting your time schedule, you can ask specific questions ahead of the meeting so we can better prepare to answer your questions. And some of the feedback that we have gotten so far has been really good. They're super passionate. They leave energized and looking to do more. And they tell their friends about the office hours and it kind of builds that sense of community. And throughout all this, we're also creating different events tailored at students and young professionals because we, then that's one of the benefits of this. We get to understand some of their needs and based on that, create specific events within Public Health Insight that will be most useful to you. And coming up soon, as we'll announce shortly, is events for LinkedIn, how to create an awesome, efficient, and optimized LinkedIn account. And we also have events like how to make the best of your practicum placement and so much more. Mm. So stay tuned. Check us out on our website. Sign up for some office hours. Get to know me and Gordon better. And we will try our best to keep doing what we do. So this is LaShawn and Gordon, and we're out. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Public Health Insight Podcast, your go-to space for informative conversations, inspiring community action. If you enjoy our podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. See you in the next one.